Hey guys, uh, welcome to PAPR training for this quarter's pass off. Um, we're going to talk about PAPRs, what they're, when we are going to need a PAPR. Um, and these are on our airborne precaution patients. So those are patients who we are ruling out TB um, if they have varicella. So that includes chickenpox or shingles. Uh, if they, the scabs are not crested over, they need to be on contact and airborne precautions. Um, and then also the measles. Um, and then most pandemic diseases. So right now we have the novel coronavirus going around. We would definitely want to um, use the PAPR, put them in the negative pressure room if uh, we're ruling out the novel coronavirus. Um, so uh, we want to first, we look at our PAPRs from CP and they come in different size kits. So each kit will come with masks as well as the PAPR itself and the hose and a battery and the battery will also have a recharger that we'll put the back we'll put the battery on in between uses so first off when we get the battery we want to make sure that we have enough battery life and the way that we are going to test that is where's my battery right here so there's a little test button you're just going to push on it and make sure that you have battery then you're going to clip your battery pack into your papper like so here lock fill it click in um you're going to check your tubing to make sure there's no cracks or damages in the tubing you're going to then um, hook up the airflow test to your papper so to turn the papper on you're going to hit the power button and you can hear it starting to generate the fan and it will go through its self checks. It does that little vibration. Um, this is your fan speed. So you just hold it and it will pick up your speed. And if you hold it again, it goes back to that normal speed or that in initial speed. So when we want to check an airflow test to make sure we have enough airflow, we're gonna hook up the little ball and you want to run it for a minute to make sure that it stays above the letter J. Where's my J? Do you got it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's J. This ball needs to be above J to meet the criteria for our area. So after we do the test, you're going to go ahead, you can power it down so it's not blowing. You're going to hook your um, hose in. And you're going to turn and push it down and twist. Then you're going to hook your hood on. This hooks into the back, snaps on. To put your papper on, you're going to belt it around your waist. Make sure it's nice and snug so it doesn't fall. You don't want to drop these. Um, they're not cheap, just like everything in healthcare. Um, then you're gonna take your mask and put it on. Make sure that you get rid of the blue film because it makes seeing really difficult when you're in the patients. And then if you have facial hair, make sure that there's no facial hair at, this, at the connection between your face and um, the mask. So, if you need to, if you're a female or male with longer hair, you can also put your hair in a hairnet if needed. So then you're gonna also put on your isolation gown over um, the papper, and you'll go in your patient's room before you leave the room, outside of the brown line, you're gonna um, doff the papper, okay? So that means you're gonna take it off. So you're gonna take your gown, gloves off, then you'll take your hood off, And your papper, you can power down just by holding the power button. And you'll want to wash the outside and the inside of your mask off. You'll put it in the box for reuse. You can label it with your name on it. This has my name on it. And you'll need to use this and do this procedure every time, or this process, every time you come in to this patient's room. Um, I think that is about it. 
Uh, go ahead and pass this off with your charge source now. This will be available back at the administration um, cabinet. Thanks.